Um, we even know when you're going to have your heart attack, by the way. We're that good. Um, so if you have sleep apnea, you are more likely to have your heart attack and sudden death between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. If you don't have sleep apnea, you are more likely to have your heart attack and sudden death between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. I thought that was a very interesting study. Um, so when people are uh, using CPAP, this one study in, what year was this? 2004 showed a decrease in death, um, uh, acute coronary syndrome, heart failure, and the need for revascularization, like stenting, putting a stent in, if you treated the sleep apnea. Um, men, in general, had uh, more severe sleep apnea and a marked increase in fatal and non-fatal events, as we already said. Um, and interestingly, uh, sleep apnea increases the risk for heart attack and death, you know, as I said, over about 30% or more in, in four to five years. Um, I'm going to actually skip over this one. This, this is about uh, stenting and uh, I don't know if you get a, if you get a copy of this, or, or you can go online and look and read off this. Um, again, more about how, you know, the progression of cardiovascular disease and sleep apnea, same types of things, the pressure gradients, the acidosis, the inflammation, the vasoconstriction, the sympathetic overload, uh, the endothelial dysfunction. There are a couple of studies that are, um, I think, going on right now. Uh, now, in the literature, I, as I said, I put this together more or less about a year and a half ago, and when I looked on, into the literature, these studies were not available yet, so I guess they're not, they're not uh, ready for prime time. But basically, they want to know if CPAP is going to improve um, atherosclerotic heart disease. Does it improve the circulation, the endothelial dysfunction? Does it improve, you know, um, sudden death? heart attacks, and we, we don't really know the, the, the answer to that question yet. Um, there is an association with sleep apnea and pulmonary artery, uh, arterial hypertension. Um, I will say that it is not uncommon that I see patients coming into the office and they say that they are short of breath. They have, they're a non-smoker, uh, they don't have any exposures, don't know why they're short of breath, and then I treat them for their bad sleep apnea and all of a sudden they don't have shortness of breath anymore. And so I wonder, hmm, did this person have sort of the beginnings of uh, pulmonary hypertension, which often presents as shortness of breath initially, and now it's a lot better because I'm treating their sleep apnea. And stage renal disease has also been something that's been related to sleep apnea, and you can go online and sort of look at that as well. And um, the two things I want to end with, which is sort of new, is that uh, in the last uh, year or two, we actually are now seeing that um, pulmonary emboli or, or uh, clotting, uh, thromboembolic disease, and sleep apnea are linked. And your PEs, at least in this, in this uh, one study, uh, you were more likely to get a, um, a PE at an earlier age and more severe disease, so bilateral PEs or saddle, saddle uh, pulmonary emboli, um, if you had sleep apnea. Um, and it's associated with being a procoagulant state, and CPAP has been shown to start to reduce this. Uh, similarly, there was a study done on cancer mortality. Again, this was the Wisconsin sleep uh, cohort study, and um, they looked at thousands of patients in their cohort, and over uh, 22 years, and they uh, took out all the confounding variables, and they actually said th and found that sleep disorder breathing was associated with an increased cancer mortality in their, in their group. So these are sort of two things that are coming down the road now that really just came out in the last two years. So treatment, I didn't uh, say a lot on treatment, but for, for obstructive sleep apnea, weight loss, maybe positional changes if sleep apnea is not so bad, maybe oral appliance if sleep apnea is not so bad, surgery, plus minus, uh, whether that would help or not, positive airway pressure, and then the newer things are electrical stimulation of the upper airway now, um, although I, I don't think we have great numbers on that yet, but um, that's a new, new therapy. And then for central sleep apnea, you really want to optimize their heart failure first. You know, the, you know, get them back to the doc and make sure they're following their cardiologist and that kind of thing, and ACE inhibitors, diuretics, beta blockers, uh, maybe re resynchronization therapy, are they a candidate for that? And then, um, you know, are we 
are they going to benefit from some, from some form of positive airway pressure in the future? And the answer is maybe, but we don't necessarily know that yet. I have patients who have heart failure and who are on ASV and ST, and they're doing great. And so I keep them on them. And that is it.